Good morning, my name is Chris Fox, and I'm coming to you raw and uncut, uh, so you're not going to see any fancy editing. This is a single take, so pardon the ums and ahs. Um, this morning, I wanted to talk about what's going on with the lockdown in Northern California, where I'm at, um, what's been happening in general, and the lessons that we can take away from it. So one of the, the first things I learned about the Marines when I was a kid is that they had a motto, adapt and overcome. And so I read up on it when I was, uh, I don't know, 14 or 15. Um, and, you know, the complete phrase, I believe, you know, any Marines, please correct me, is improvise, adapt, and overcome. But the message there was you are oftentimes in your life going to find yourself facing circumstances that you can't control. And you're going to have to make some choices on how you adapt to those. And this has impacted me a lot of times in my life. So I've, I've, I've reached a, a crossroads where I don't necessarily know what my future is going to be. And so I have to make a choice and take a plunge. And sometimes that's really scary. So I remember back before I took my first job as a software engineer, I worked at a company called Redwood Credit Union. Those of you who've read 5,000 words per hour, if you've read the last chapter where I talk about what my life was like and how you know kind of terrible it was, well, here I was sitting at this cusp. I believed that the iPad and the iPhone were gonna be massive, like absolutely massive, and that I could change my career. At that point, I was still making something like $12 an hour. My credit card debt was growing every month. My life was really, really hard. Um, and, and it felt like it was getting harder. And I'd spent, I don't know, 18 months at that point teaching myself iOS development. I'd been learning to program for the iPhone and the iPad, but there was this persistent voice in my head that said, Chris, you can't give up your day job. You cannot quit this Redwood Credit Union job because if you do so, and you become a software engineer and you fail, I mean, you've got no college to excuse me, you've got no college degree, what makes you think you can pull this off? And so I had this nagging voice in my head. And at the time, the person I was dating, um, it was the, the girl before Lisa, she wasn't very supportive of this dream and encouraged me to stay at the company. And finally, I made the choice, no, I've got to do this. And so I quit my job and I took my very first software engineering job. I, you know, The initial salary they paid me, I believe, was $60,000 a year. Within a few months, it jumped to 72. Like for the first time in over a decade, I was making decent money uh, and it really improved my self-esteem. But if I hadn't had the wherewithal to quit a safe job, the, the sure thing, and jump into that position, I, I never would have made it. I, I never would have gotten any further. And let me be clear, I'm not advising you to take foolish risks. Um, I will be the very last person to co-sign your BS if you are an author who says, I'm going to quit my day job and write. If you're not already making enough money from your writing to pay the bills and you haven't paid off every cent of debt and put a bunch of money in the, the bank, don't quit your day job. But in this instance, quitting my day job was adapting. It was me understanding that I had recognized an opportunity, and if I didn't attempt to seize that opportunity, if I didn't take advantage of what I'd learned about iOS development and try, then I was going to be in that $12 an hour job forever. And so sometimes I think about that version of Chris. So picture a Chris who is, you know, 90 pounds heavier, um, timid, won't talk to anybody, um, he avoids all human contact where possible, spends his time, you know, getting high and playing video games. This was me. And I had to make the conscious choice. I'm going to be a leader in this company and I'm going to help them develop this application basically from scratch. Uh, and I took that leap. And the next year was the most terrifying of my life. Every single day, I mean, I didn't have a, a four year education. I had, I garage tinkered on my app for 18 months, and that's all I know about iOS development. And they put me in this position where no one else at the company knew anything about iOS development either. So I had to figure it all out. And I ended up learning all sorts of crazy things. So this, bear in mind, this is, is back in, gosh, I want to say 2012. Um, and this is before DocuSign invented. So one of the features they asked me to add to the application that I worked on, it's called iConsult, was a version of DocuSign. I needed to be able to load a PDF into the app, identify all of the fields, sign them, save the signature and then upload it to a server. So there were all sorts of problems like that that I was having to face constantly, it was terrifying. And if you're anything like me, your journey in the author world is very similar to what I've described in software. It's difficult to, to do things we've never done before and to take chances and to try stuff. And it's doubly so when we get rejected because we feel that pain of, of failure and we've been conditioned by society not to fail, and if you do fail, to lie, pass blame, or try not to acknowledge it. Sweep it under the rug as quickly as possible, as opposed to, oh, hey, look, I failed. What can I learn from that? 
So if you've been a fan of the channel for any length of time, then you've probably looked back and seen me make a whole bunch of mistakes at different points. Uh, and, and I'm totally unapologetic about this stuff. If I screw up, I'm almost excited where I'm like, guys, look what I did. Um, because those are my opportunities to learn. Those are my opportunities to adapt and to overcome whatever the current challenge is. So today I'm looking around at this lockdown and I really can't and shouldn't be leaving my house. Any, any risk of doing so means that I'm exposing myself uh, to this virus. And you know, maybe it's, it's, it's not as dangerous as I think it is in my head, but there is that risk that I'm aware of. And it's not just my safety, it's my family, it's my parents. So, you know, what do I do? Well, I took a good look at what supplies am I gonna need for the next month, and I engineered my life in such a way that I should be able to not leave. You know, I've got <laughs> enough burgers and steaks and, you know, other supplies to, to keep me going for a good long time and to feed myself and feed my family. Um, but I'm not letting this affect my my mindset. You know, I've got a brand new child. He's he's 10 weeks old. Kaylin's doing great, by the way. Um, and, and I need to get more books out. I've got to build a future for for my son, I've, for my family. I, I need to work harder on my business. And so I can't afford to be distracted by the fact that we have a pandemic crisis going on. Not when I can still be working and still be helping. And I realized, you know, it's easier for me to do because I don't have the life that I used to have. If I worked at Rapid Credit Union still making $12 an hour and had to make a decision about do I go to my day job and, and be around people that could be sick all day or you know miss rent, that's a tough choice. And, and I'm glad that I'm not in a position to do that anymore. Um, so if you are in that position where you still have to you know go to your day job and you still have to, to function in society at a time when we're all very afraid, you know hopefully you're doing everything you can um, to adapt and to overcome. You know, to, to keep a good head on your shoulders and, and to help yourself and to help others. Uh, to that end, Craig Martell is in a couple of different private groups with me. And we were in one private group and he pointed out that he had discounted all of his nonfiction down to 99 cents. Um, I've done the same thing. No, this is not a, a play for me to try to make money. Uh, if For those that don't understand how ebooks work on Amazon, if I charge $2.99 or more, I get $2 roughly. If I charge 99 cents, we only get 33 cents. It's basically half the um, the amount of money you'd normally get on an even smaller cover price. So I've discounted my books down to effectively nothing. I'm not making any profit on them right now um, because I'm hoping other people can use this as an opportunity to adapt and overcome as well. If you're terrified right now, if you, like me, um, are a science fiction writer especially, and so you tend to think about global pandemics and you, know, you write about that stuff and you're always wondering and you're a prepper, if all these things are, are turning over in your head, maybe try to make a conscious decision today to focus on something else. Is there an area that you can improve? Is there something in your life that you can control, that you can work on or focus your energy? Because we can't control what's going to happen to the world at large. And while we can take precautions, there's not too much beyond that that we can do. So if you've already taken the precautions and like me are sitting around stewing in the circumstances of, of what's going on for us right now, find a way to work, find a way to move forward, pour yourself into being productive and doing what you can do. It's amazing to me at least how adapting in that way helps my self-esteem and helps me feel better. So I would love to hear how you guys are doing. I'd love to hear how you're surviving and, and how this maybe has impacted your life, the whole lockdown thing. So feel free to post in the comments. Um, I'll probably have a more polished video next week or the week after uh, for those not really tracking my projects. My Kickstarter is about to come to an end, so I'm working pretty hard on that. I just launched Hatchling uh, and am knee deep in the Ark War. So I've got you know, other work that I'm, I'm on uh, at the moment. So trying to take care of all that stuff at once. Um, has not left me as much time to spend on this channel as I'd like. Uh, I will try to get more videos, uh, ideally more consistent, you know, over the, the latter half of the spring and summer. Um, the good news is the second channel is going well. I am continuing to put up uh, videos about my role-playing game and about role-playing in general and having a blast doing that. So develop that. developing that resource has been fun. Um, anyway, guys, if you need anything during this, this crisis, if there's anything you think I can do, um, let me know in the comments. You know, I would love to try and help you in any way that I can. Uh, we're, we're all in this together, really, globally, and we're all trying to get through it. And the economic damage to so many of us is extreme at this point. So if that's you, I, I mean, maybe it sounds cheesy, but really all I can do is discount my books. Like, I don't have the power to help you any other way financially. Uh, if I was wealthy, I would probably be making some pretty big donations to various charities right about now. But you know, as I'm not, um, this is really a what I can do to help and I want to try to do something. So hopefully that's useful if, if you, you know, want to kill some time and read a cheap book. Um, I hope you're doing okay, guys. You know, and I will see you probably next week or the week after. Uh, let's get through this together.